What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. Uh, we're going to talk to y'all again tonight about trout fishing. It is the end of October. Uh, water temperatures are dropping off a little bit. We've got a cold front in the future, and, and everyone's talking trout. Everyone wants to go catch trout, and have got a good buddy on here tonight, and we're going to talk to y'all about trout fishing. So um, before we get into that, go check out Eastern Current Fishing on Facebook. We've got a Facebook group. Um, join that, and it's a great way to connect with other listeners connect with guides uh up and down the east coast and uh hopefully get y'all uh fishing and uh, more effectively fishing and and maybe even find some some good buddies to get out in the water and fish with um also if you haven't go subscribe to eastern current on instagram or on youtube uh, and leave us a review on any of the podcast platforms it, it's it helps out a ton um and if you do love eastern current a lot uh, you can also become a Patreon member, and we'll have a little bit of extra content on Patreon for y'all. Um, kind of every couple weeks, I've been uploading on there. Hopefully, as we get into the fall, I'll be able to upload uh, at least once a week, maybe even two or three times a week. I've just been real busy and haven't been able to stay on top of that super, super heavy. But if you do like Eastern Current, go check out Patreon. It's a great way to, to, to help us out and to, to get a little extra content. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk trout fishing. We're, uh, we're going to specifically kind of talk about locating trout like early season covering water and kind of finding those areas that um, can be productive for you and, and how to do that so i've got my buddy luke moser on here i'm gonna bring him on there you go what's up man hey man how are you doing this evening oh doing good doing good it's always so funny like because we'll always talk pre-show and then i'm like what's going on man we got to kind of act like we're just talking again yeah, for the yeah, first yeah. time um, yeah no doubt but uh yeah man thanks for coming on luke's always a, a trooper i was like god i need to record a podcast tonight so i texted luke and he's like yeah i think i can make it happen so we got him on here yeah uh, for sure for sure everyone i've talked to lately has been like luke moser's crushing them so you're you're a good guy to have one to talk about trout fishing so um i'll take it for, yeah for sure for sure uh well let's talk a little bit about people have if you haven't, we, we've had Luke on before, and we've talked about his backstory and fish and everything. So I think tonight we're just going to kind of jump right into it. But kind of tell me about um, your trout fishing. Uh, I know you, you do a, a ton of different types of fishing, but um, you seem like like someone that does really enjoy trout fishing. Would you say that's one of your favorite fish to target here in North Carolina? Yeah, 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 yeah no doubt. Um, you know... <sighs> You know, I, I don't know, man. For me, my top three um, would probably be flounder, flounder and trout are real close. Yeah. Um, but probably flounder and trout. And truth be told, sheep's head. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had to catch drum and everything else. Um, but you know, that's that's what I grew up doing with my dad, man. So it, yeah, it kind of stuck with me. But uh, trout certainly gives uh, you know flounder a, a run for its money, man. So this time of year, I get a. Uh, get pretty pumped up and it's you know the flounder season being closed it's made it to a uh, easy transition into trout season for definitely me. definitely it's uh it, it, i i'd say so many more people because i i wouldn't have typically done this but a lot of guys are still flounder fishing hard this time of year if there wasn't a season uh, it's such a solid time to catch flounder um i personally have always kind of moved into the trout but but i, I know a lot of y'all hammers like yourself would still be flounder fishing which would probably help me out catching more trout <laughs> if we didn't have this close yeah. season um no doubt well yeah it, it's weird it, it's weird man i mean with, with the flounder being closed you know it, it's a real gray area for me i mean this time of year i'm kind of back and forth you know i'll play the tide if the tide's better for flounder i'll go flounder fish you know the tide's better for trout i'll go trout fish right. but with the season being closed I, I have as much as i love to catch them i have no desire to you know to go fish for them. i'm gonna you know right for the speckled thing right exactly exactly well let's talk a little bit first off kind of what you prefer to look for in, in a trout area this time of year you know as the water's starting to cool off everyone's thinking you know speckled trout not only do our local fish start to feed better in this cooler temperatures but also we're looking for these migratory fish that are coming in from out of state um, and kind of following that that warmer water south as the cold water pushes in from north what do you like to find? Like, what do you look for in a good trout fishing spot or area? Man, I mean, it, it goes just like anything else. Um, you know, flounder, drum, whatever. I mean, um, the, the main important thing to me this time of year is, you know, looking for bait. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's creeks or rocks or jetties or headwalls, you know, whatever. Um, you know, not only bait, but, um, you know, nervous bait, 
Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, bait, bait that's jumping a lot, you know, even for no reason. I mean, you know, you can you can ride up and down the waterway or creeks, whatever, um, and, you know, see finger mud or whatever swimming around. Um, you know, they don't they don't jump for no reason, per se, you know, when it's a school. Um, you know, certainly lizard fish and bluefish, you know, are, you know, have a tendency to spook them, but, you know, those fish also hang around just like speckled trout do. Right. You know, they're all there for the same reason. Um, you know, not to say that you, you're you not going to catch trout if there's not bait there, but um, just for me this time of year, man, I mean, that's the first thing I'm going to go look for. Um, you know, bait swimming, nervous bait, um, for sure. I mean, that's, that's one of the main things to me this time of year. Anyways. Right, right, right. Definitely. I, I think it's a, such a good time of year to learn a lot about where the, the trout are holding because of the amount of bait we still have around. Like you can look at a shoreline or a bank and watch a school of mullet come down it and like pinpoint the areas where it gets nervous. Uh, I was doing that yep. today. Like there, there was some mullet, uh, mullet pouring down the bank that I was fishing. Um, and I came to my initial point that I wanted to fish and fished it for a little while and was kind of just all, I'm always this time of year looking around the whole time I'm fishing one area and kind of trying to figure out like you're talking about what the bait's doing and we didn't get any bites on this point but there was this one little it wasn't a point but where the the grass kind of came out just a little bit and came back in mm -hmm. and every time a school of mullet came around that it would get sh get shattered or scattered yep. and went up there and we ended up catching a few fish off that and it, I never really fished that little section of that bank um, and the bait and to, granted today was really calm it was a really good day to read what the bait was doing um, right. but, but yeah that's a really good point you bring up that bait this time of year can really help you kind of figure out where to fish and um, sure. not that you I can't mean, catch yeah. them when you're away from the bait but it, it you know right. they want to be where the right. bait is right and I mean obviously as you get into the cooler months you know you don't really see any bait and, right. you know you're still catching fish um, you know obviously I think a lot of people associate you know trout with live shrimp which mm -hmm. you know absolutely i mean no doubt but you know this time of year as you well know i mean they're gonna eat finger mullet oh, yeah. glass minnows um anything like that man i mean a bunch of the trout i've been catching they've been throwing up glass minnows and finger mullet and little croaker and shrimp and everything else um you know so that that's that's a huge key factor to me um right now it seems like if i'm not seeing any bait um or any nervous bait I'm not catching fish. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, and that's a good point you bring in too is like the glass minnows because we got we have so many glass minnows leaving the creeks and stuff right now, uh, as well as just migrating south. And those fish eat those. I, I, have you ever fished that little 3ds minnow by Yozuri? <laughs> you know what, man? Um, I, I don't. Um, and I, I thought about it a bunch of times. Like, man, I should be fishing something that looks like a glass minnow. You know, very similar to it. Um, I bought one. I don't know. It's been a while, and I, I've never used it. Yeah, you know, for for no other reason. But I mean, it's got to work. Is that something you like to throw? Well, I bought a, I bought a bunch of them. There was one of those baits where I was like, dang, and I bought more than I needed at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I've caught fish on them. I've done really good on them. Ben Chesney at Intercoastal Angler really turned me on to them. Mm -hmm. um, but every time, like every bank that I'm ever on, and I see those glass minnows pouring down, and I'm like, golly, I need to throw a 3ds minnow. Um, and they definitely work. They work really well. But I just haven't thrown it yet this year. And I keep telling myself yeah. to and telling myself to, and I'm not doing it. Um, yep. But, but yep. that's that's I'm a right big time bait that they eat, the glass minnow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. I mean, a bunch of the trout I've been catching here lately have had them in it. Um, you know, so, I mean, it, I don't know why I don't throw it. I mean, it's got to work. Right, just, right. You know what I mean? And you, you get your set few lures, and, you know, it's hard to – hard to make yourself switch it definitely is it definitely is well let's what i want to talk about mainly is kind of like working through an area and locating trout but before we do that let's talk a little bit about like the lures that you like to throw share with me kind of some of your confidence baits um you know whether it be live bait or or specific lures that you like to throw kind of take me through that that kind of step of this sure sure so um you know man i, I fish live bait for literally everything um except for trout um I, I don't i don't know why i feel like it's cheating um you know that's just me um so i mean i'm definitely artificial man um obviously the the doa shrimp i mean it's the looking at it, it's the dumbest cheapest looking shrimp <laughs> um in comparison to some of the other stuff i mean voodoo 
any of these other, you know, new shrimp imitations, man, they look so real. But, um, you know, the, the, the DOA shrimp is hard to beat. I mean, it's it's kind of idiot proof. And, you know, in the water, man, it looks just like a regular shrimp. You know, the way it falls and everything. I mean, it mimics it perfectly. It does. Um, so that, I mean, that that's a great lure. Um, you know, it's just, it's really hard for me not to throw that. Do you have a specific color you like in that? Or, or do you kind of play around with different colors? Not really. I mean, I'll play around with it. Yeah. Um, it just kind of depends on the water clarity. I mean, obviously the reddish pink, um, some of the gold I've used white. It, 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 I don't yeah. really, I'm not sold to one particular one. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it just depends. Um, obviously, I mean, I, I like the MR-17, so that's about the only mirror lure I throw. Mm-hmm. Um, and I typically don't fish them until it gets a little bit cooler. Yeah. Uh, you know, once some of the finger mullets start to get away, um, you know, that's when I'll start throwing it more and more. Um, top water, man. Um, you know, I love it. Uh, you know, Rapala, skitter walks, any, anything like that. Um, you know, spooks, um, you know, really those three, um, are definitely one of my favorites. I mean, I'll throw the trout tricks, the DOA, you know, the DOA shrimp, stuff like that on a jig head. Um, those are not something I throw as consistent, um, as I do those three lures right there. Um, yeah. Pop and cork, you know, with a pop and cork, you know, a variety of different shrimps, voodoo, DOA. I like the voodoo a little bit better on a pop and cork just because it's a little bit heavier. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but, I mean, go-to, that's that's right off the bat. I mean, I'm going to have that tied on, you know, right out of the get bait, you know, get-go. I mean, I'll throw some jerk baits and stuff like that. Um, but that's kind of my bread and butter with it for sure. Definitely. Would you say that out of all that, there's like one – confidence bait that you really feel DOA. the doa yeah that's the same with me yeah if i'm like all right is there fish here it's like all right i'm gonna town a doa and i know if they're if they're gonna eat anything they'll eat this <laughs> yeah you know if i'm trying to cover a lot of ground and fish fast um it's not the bait not for bait. that yeah um you know it, it's not i mean it's you got to be confident and take your time you know let it do its thing but um if i'm trying to cover ground and really really work you know a new area or something like that um that's that's not it um you know i'll fish you know some kind of um you know hard bait or something like that you know mirror lure or jerk bait um or you know some kind of z-man yeah. trout trick something like that on a jig head um you know as far as fast fishing but um that would be my probably one of my favorites really heck yeah yeah that, that's a great one um i need to play around more with the colors but but that has bait has become the doa is my, my most confident bait as well I can't get away from it. Like, yeah, yeah, and man, if if a if a bluefish bites it in half, which is going to happen, you know, it's not as painful as paying ten dollars for you know a voodoo or something like that. That you know it gets bit in half, and you know you're you're done. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you you get. I think it's like three for seven something, seven bucks. So yeah, um, they don't. They're not the. They're not the most durable baits in the world, but they. No, uh, no, 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 they're they're not. They're not. But it's um. It's hard not to use it. it yeah, really is. it really is. There, there's such. If there's a fish there that's going to feed, if you if you take the time and throw a and, and fish a shrimp through there, slow the DOA shrimp, they're going to eat it. Um, yeah, and I mean e- everything will bite it. I mean, trout, flounder, drum. I mean, bluefish, whatever. I mean, I've caught I've caught Spanish on them before. I mean, you yeah. name it, they'll bite it. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, well, like I've been saying, the the kind of I think what would be a cool thing to tackle with this podcast is kind of. Early season, everyone's you know itching, running around a bunch, trying to figure out where these fish are. And to me, it's so important to um, to kind of fish quickly, but know how quickly you can get away with fishing an area. So like, kind of work through an area quickly um, until you locate fish. Like a lot of times, this time of year, you could go catch twenty fish in one spot one day, go back the next day and have nothing there. Um, as we yep. have these pulses of fish coming through the inlet, I, I kind of want to pick your brain about what your day looks like when you get started. Like, how do you, how fat, how quickly will you work through an area? Do you try multiple baits in an area? Um, and, and I'll kind of fire some questions at you as we get through that. But like, just trying to get on that bite in the morning when there's not necessarily a ton of trout around yet. What What are some of your tips and tricks for that? Sure, um, man. Right off the bat, I mean, if I'm you know there daylight or you know a hair after um you know top water yeah um you know it it's really hard for me to go somewhere and not throw top water first thing in the morning um 
And, you know, I, I may get to a spot that, you know, I think it's got some trout in it, or, you know, that maybe I caught trout in the day before or whatever, you know. I'm going to work that area, you know, relatively slow, um, you know, taking my time throwing top water through it. Um, and, you know, man, it, you know, if I catch fish, um, I, I'll stay there. Um, but a lot of times, you know, if I hit an area like that, you know, go to my first spot, throw top water, you know, I, I think most of the time people, you know, continue to stop and, or excuse me, continue to keep fishing, but going into, you know, throwing, you know, uh, you know, whatever the other bait is that they're wanting to fish and it's something that's going to dive down or whatever. Um, but instead of doing that, man, a lot of times if, you know, if I catch a few fish there, I'll leave them and I'll go somewhere else while I've still got, you know, the right light, Mm -hmm. you know, to continue to throw top water, you know, so I might try to find a couple of different areas that fish are biting that day, you know, so if, if one school of fish just decides to quit biting, you know, I know I've got those other fish in there that seem to be fired up. Um, you know, so that, that's something I like to do. Um, you know, if I've got the time to do it and, you know, it's not a high pressure situation, um, you know, it just seems to, I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket. Yeah, you know, definitely. If I, if I stay in that one spot, if I leave, you know, I might can pick up a, a few more fish or find a couple of new fish, you know, so I like to try to take advantage of the, you know, the daylight to throw top water, um, in as many places as I can, you know, I can always come back and fish those areas you know, with different baits, but, you know, if you run out of the daylight to do it, um, you know, you just kind of miss an opportunity. Yeah. I think that's such a good point, man, is like, and and just kind of reiterates what we talk about a lot on here. The fact that top water, you know, it can seem intimidating, but actually use the right way. It's a really great search bait. Uh, it's a great way to kind of locate fish. You might not catch them, but like that, that trout blows up on your plug, you know, to come back there later and fish it again. Um, yeah. and that happened to us this morning in one spot, the tide was wrong. The first two and a half hours of my trip this morning, we didn't have a single trout to the boat. Um, yeah. but we had two spots that I got bit in or I got bit in one and a client got bit in another. It was very slow. So I was fishing along with my clients. Um, and we came back to those later on when it kind of lay the wind laid out a little bit and we caught a ton of trout in both those spots. And it's the same deal with the, with the top water. You get a blow up or two, catch one fish. Not every trout in that area is going to come up and eat that topwater plug, but that right. trout just showed you, hey, there's fish here, you know, catch one or two, move on, come back, and, and, and it, it works out well. I yeah. think that's a really, really yeah. good point, um, taking yeah. advantage you know, of those very, prime hours to locate some fish and then come back to them. Sure, sure. I mean, certainly it happens, but, um, you know, very rarely is there just one trout in that creek or on that oyster bar or whatever. I mean, so – that's why I like to do that. You know, if you get those one or two blow ups and then nothing else, um, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I'm sure you've been a part of that. You know, you, you throw top water to, to death and you don't get any bites and then, you know, you throw something that's going to sink and you know, there there's fish there. So that, that's why I like to do that. I mean, if I get, you know, one short strike or, you know, a couple, whatever, you know, that's enough for me definitely to come back and fish it. You know, I, I think some people just cause they get one top water bite, you know, oh, there's no fish here. Well, that's not, necessarily no, the case especially with trout you know yeah. uh, so that, that that's a, a very useful thing i've figured out so i mean definitely don't you know i don't like to sell myself short you know about one one bite and just say oh there's nothing here and, and not come back and fish it yeah um and the nice thing too we were talking about, you were talking about this is like just the speed that you can work a top water and how quickly you can cover mm-hmm. a piece of bank yeah uh, you know, different baits are going to have different speeds they need to be worked at, and the top water's probably right. your quickest bait to cover water with. No um, doubt, no doubt. So, well, let's let's talk a little bit more about kind of like your range in an area. So, like if you're if you're going to go trout fishing in the morning, um, in your head, like planning it out, how how far of an area will you cover looking for fish in the morning? Uh, are you going to fish, you know, like a mile of, uh, you know, a, a mile down the waterway? Or are you going to, you know, run 10 miles looking for fish at different spots? Um, or like fish one you know, inlet system or, or, or like three inlet systems kind of deal? That's, uh, that's a, a good question. Um, you know, not, not basing any of this on um, throwing top water just in general, um, you know, cause it's kind of hard to throw top water in one spot and then drop 10 miles to go do it somewhere right, else. Right. Um, you know, I, man, I might move a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, if the fish are biting in one area, then, you know, I, I'm not really going that far, man. I mean, I've, 
you know, a long way. It, it really just depends. Um, you know, sometimes I have to go a long ways to find, you know, fish. I might have to go, you know, I don't know, man, 15, 20 miles some days of, of you know, making circles and everything, going back to places, you right. know, hitting different areas at different times of the tide. I mean, it, it, I know you know this and, you know, other people will too, but I mean, you can show up to an area that's, you know, you're there 15 minutes early mm-hmm. and you leave and go somewhere else and then come back to it. Um, and, you know, the fish might be biting. So, I mean, that, that's a lot of what it is, is, you know, running around hitting these places at different times of the tide or, you know, whatever the wind may be doing. Um, you know, and sometimes that's all it takes to find fish that are feeding, you know, go hit one spot, you know, nothing will, you know, go back to a spot I just left from, you know, and from, you know, 20 minutes from then. And, you know, they might be biting them. Yeah. The trout can really turn on that quick. Um, you know, that that's the main thing for me, man, is it's hard to, you know, to fish an area really good and everything. You know, you're, you feel confident about it when you leave and you put in your effort to go back to it in 20 or 30 minutes. Right. But sometimes that's all it takes. Um, and, you know, I, obviously I've, I've figured that out over time. But, I mean, you can just – you can be at a spot 30 minutes too soon um, and never go back to it, and then the fish are biting. Yeah. Um, so that, that's a lot of what it is. I mean, I mean, I do a lot of, you know, locating fish um, and then going back to it. I mean, I might fish the same, the same spot three or four times in a day. Yeah. Yeah. This time of year. Definitely. You know, when, Definitely. when the trout can be a little bit weird and they're, they're only – they're only schooled up, you know, in certain areas. Um, so that certainly helped me out a lot. If that makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense, man. I think that's, that's really good. Um, and I agree with you. Like today, one of the areas, and I'm just talking about today cause I trout fished, but we got one bite early in the day in this one spot and fished it for another 10, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, no bites and really fished it thoroughly. Um, came back 15, 20 or not, sorry, came back probably two hours later and caught a ton of fish out yep. of that same spot. Yep. Um, and, and so one bite, you know, don't don't stay there all day because you got one bite, but come back to it. You know, go fish some other yep. stuff and come back Absolutely. in there and check it again. Um, and come in there three or four times, like you're saying, and keep checking it. Like if you, and for me, a lot of times when I've when I've come back and checked a spot again and gotten lucky and gotten on a bite, it's because I'm like, dang, I'm kind of running out of spots to go to. Like I need to go back to <laughs> yeah. to where I had a bite. Absolutely. And then it pays off, and you're like, okay. So then your your wheels start turning, and you're like, all right, the, these fish are either sitting here not eating at this tide, or maybe they're sitting in a slightly different area and falling into here or, sl- or sliding into this area from from down yep. the bank. Yep. But yeah, uh, no, and I mean, I don't. You you may have seen this. I, I just haven't. Um, you know, I, I know you do a lot of shallow water fishing for drum and stuff like that. And I mean, I fish shallow for drum, but not in the same you know concept right, right. that you do. You know, I don't. For me, I don't see the drum fishing or the flounder or anything like that turn on a dime yeah. over nothing that you can see or realize or anything like the trout does. Um, it's very true. You know, they, I mean, it, it's amazing to me sometimes. I mean, you can sit in a spot for two hours and then all of a sudden it's just on. Yeah. Um, you know, I have people ask me that. I'm sure you do too. You know, why, aren't, why am I not catching any fish? You know, and I mean, a lot of times it's just you leave too early. Or yeah. you get there too early, whatever. I mean, they just they they can turn on a dime, and that's what makes it tricky. So that's why I do, you know, move around to so many different places throughout the day. Yeah, for sure. Well, tell me this: when is it time to move spots for you? Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, with any other fish, I could give you a definite answer. Um, <laughs> with trout. Um, because it can turn on i mean it's it's a judgment call i guess i mean sometimes i get bored of sitting there um you know typically you know if all the conditions are right and there's fish everywhere and they're they should be biting i mean five minutes ten minutes yeah you know if i fish the area good and i'm confident in it um you know if, if i've truly worked the whole area that i'm you know targeting um five ten minutes um i'm probably going somewhere else yeah uh, usually i mean they're they're not all that different from you know other fish i mean if they're there and they're biting they're biting yeah you definitely. Know, it's five ten minutes is plenty enough time um you know to catch a fish i mean i might would you know work my top water through there um and then maybe work a few you know shrimp or jerk baits or mirror lures or whatever for a few minutes as well then that's that's probably it if i if i feel confident i put in my 
you know, solid effort into it, I'm probably gone after that. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's, you know, based on the day before I caught him at this time, at this tide, you know, whatever. And you're waiting for it. But outside of that, if, it's, if I'm just fishing five, ten minutes, I'm gone. Yeah. I'm with you. I, I'm about a 10 minute max and I'm very ADD. But I think it's important oh, yeah. for trout fishing. You know, red fishing, sometimes you got to wait and kind of work an area a little slower. But, but trout, you know, if you don't have one trout bite in 10 minutes, you need to move. And you don't have to necessarily move, you know, to the next creek, but drop back 30 yards or slide up, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, yeah. a couple hundred yards and, and, and fish little different sections of that bank. A lot of times when I'm fishing, tell me if, if you do it differently. It's the beauty of spot lock. I mean, it, spot lock and Minn Kota trolling motors have changed trout fishing forever because you can right slowly now. work your way down a bank. You know, hit an area, drop back 15 yards, hit that area, drop back 15 yards. Because those schools will slide up and down these banks. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I know you've been a part of this. I've been a part of it. I, I think anybody who's really trout fished, I mean, you're sitting where you caught them the day before. You're in the hot spot. Right. You're ready. You're geared up. And then Delbert and Buster come in, you know, <laughs> in a whatever boat 20 feet from you. And they're catching fish and you're not. I mean, it's, you know, that that's why it's so crucial to cover ground if, if you have the capability to. And the troll, the, like you said, the troll motor just makes it uh, really, really convenient. Definitely, it does. And one thing, some of y'all might not have a trolling motor. And one thing that I've kind of helped people answer this question a little bit, and I've done this before when a trolling motor's been broken or when I've been on a boat without a trolling motor, is get yourself a long anchor line and, and set up where you can drop that anchor line back so you can hang the anchor once drop back you know 15 more feet 20 more feet tie it again drop back 20 more feet tie it again now if you're in a crowded area of trout fishing uh, more so than red fishing and well flounder fishing can be a little different but uh you know yeah. people will kind of fish on top of each other someone uh, i would say you know 50 yards and people are going to be and, and sometimes closer than that kind of sitting near you especially if you're fishing some of the popular fall trout fishing spots so you got to be cautious of your anchor rope there, but but cranking up your motor like a lot of people will kind of idle right into spots to trout fish, and you can definitely still catch them like that. But still being sneaky, even if you're in six, seven, eight feet of water, those fish feel a motor and it will spook them and it'll push them around a little bit. Um, so trying to be you know crank the motor less and um, sure c- can help out for sure. So. And I've heard some people say that'll completely contradict me, like, "Oh yeah, crank the motor up every once in a while, get them fired up again, and, and keep casting in there." So, um, but yeah, how, how do you kind of work through a bank when you, you know, you want to fish this 150 yards of shoreline? Um, is there a specific sure. kind of way you break that down, pick it apart? There is, and I, I'm actually kind of glad you you brought up the motor point. Um, it just made me think of something, um, and we can get into that in a little bit. Um, feel free to bring it back up, but. Um, you know, talking about covering ground is trolling yeah. The trout. Yeah, go just jump into that first. Let's go. Let's talk about that. Okay, okay. I mean, because we're talking about locating here, fish, and that's a great way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you're not confident in your top water throwing, or you know, you just don't like doing it, you know, whatever the reason may be, um, obviously trolling, you're going to cover a lot more ground. Um, and I don't do it near as much as I used to. Um, but I mean, this time of year, man, when the trout are kind of here, they're kind of not, you know, you're, you're beating up a lot of residential fish, you know, your migratory fish haven't really kind of gotten here yet, per yeah. se. Um, trolling for them, you know, just eliminates all the, the struggle and grind of casting and casting and casting. Um, and, you know, typically what I'm doing on that, you know, I'm just trolling a grass bank um, in the waterway is you know okay it's not my favorite you know if you've got you know decent enough water um you know up in creeks especially if you can find you know a a long you know grass bank um you know different oyster bars whatever um you know i mean i'm typically trolling two rods you know you can troll three it's a little bit more complicated than it needs to be um usually when i'm doing that man i'm just gonna troll um you know a jig head and some kind of curly tail yeah it'd be gold for z man or whatever um or a paddle tail um i know there's you know an assortment of hard baits i've used in the past a few different mirror lures i don't really remember um what the style of them was yeah anything with a feel on it um something like that man it's just a great way to locate trout um you know and it's not like spanish you don't have to you know throw it out you know 75 yards behind the boat man i mean i I put one, you know, just out past the wash, you know, like if you were king fishing, yeah. um, 
not that far and I'd run one a little bit longer. Um, I don't like to use my Trollo motor to do it. I'm typically using my motor, right. um, you know, just in gear. It seems like to me that the Trollo motor ends up kind of making more racket to me. Yeah, when you're um, trying to move that quickly. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you're killing your battery, but um, man, just trolling that, you know, grass banks, points, you know, same concept, looking for bait, um, anything like that. Um, it, it's much easier to troll into the current. You've got a lot more control of your boat and your speed. Um, you know, I think you're making it look more realistic to go with the current. Right. Um, which, you know, then you could use your trolling motor. Sometimes it works where you can more or less control yourself with it. Um, but most of the time I still end up trolling into the current and truthfully for the less headache and everything, I haven't really been able to tell that big of a difference yeah. going with, um, or going with it. Um, Do you have a specific so, weight jig head you like to use when you're trolling those soft plastics? It depends on it, depth. It just then. depends on it depends on the depth and what the current's you know doing with me yeah. um, or you know, going against me. Um, you know, uh, most of the time I end up pulling a three eight steel. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm fishing deep enough. There's usually enough you know falling or rising current. Um, it's one of those things I like to do when there's good water movement. Yeah, um, I don't particularly do it when it's when it's slack. You know. Um, but man, that's a that's an easy way to locate trout. You don't have to be right up tight to the grass. Um, I don't think, um, you know, just just trolling, you know, maybe 20, 30 yards off. I mean, even even farther sometimes. It just depends on your water depth. Yeah. Um, I mean, typically when I'm doing that, I'm looking for at least three feet. Um, you know, I don't want to be shallow enough where I'm kicking up mud or running my motor. Um, or anything like that. So about about three foot is usually kind of my magic number for it at least. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it really is such a good way to, to locate those fish. And trout, I mean, you'll notice it with the top water more so than anything. They'll kind of just slowly follow a bait for a while. Sure. And so, you know, a cast sometimes might not be long enough when they're not really fired up to, to yep. get that fish to eat. But then you troll a bait and they can follow it for 100 yards. You know, they, they might eat it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean – They'll try. I mean, they'll they'll follow a bait a long ways. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's quite amazing. I mean, you know, I've had the same fish swipe at a lure. I don't know how many times. <laughs> you know, top water. I mean, they, they really will. And I mean, that's I think that's kind of like like you're saying. I mean, when you're trolling, man, if they're just kind of being lethargic and lazy, you know, you're not going that fast. You know, two miles an hour is not too fast for a trout to fall. In. Right. Exactly. Like, you know, you might hit the right current where it kicks your lure, or does something weird, and that fish will hit. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, that that it really is a cool way, I, and I did pretty well last year trolling around up in the New River. Um, on mm -hmm. some slower days, I'd fish, I'd troll a white X trap, and that was a great bait for yep. it too. Just kind of bumping in and out of gear. Um, and those days where I just couldn't locate them, and then or you'd cast and cast and cast, you'd mark fish on your graph, nothing, and then you go troll through them, and bam, you'd hook a fish on on the troll. And so yep. I think yep. that that ability to be able to follow a lure for a while sometimes really really helps. And then, it, and then it gives you that confidence you need to, to sit there and then really pick an area apart. You're like, all right, these fish are here. I, I, now yeah. I know they're here. Um, I'm just got to sit here and pick it apart a little bit. Um, That's right. That's right. Well, let's talk a, a little. What was the other question I asked before that? I think it was. I was just sitting, I was sitting there trying to think. I believe it was something about uh, how, I, how I would fish a stretch, you know, 150 yards. Oh, or something yeah. Like that. Let's go through that. So, like, it, let's say it's not first thing in the morning. Let's say you've come back. Topwater fishing is kind of done. Maybe it's a little later yep. in the morning. You can still throw a top water a little bit. Um, take me through kind of how you'd work a bank and know like, all right, this it's time to go fish somewhere else or it's time to stay here. Sure. Um, you know, just, I'm going to just say I'm just fishing a, you know, a creek mouth, you know, hundred yards long or whatever, yeah. um, off, off the waterway, just as an example. Um, you know, man, I mean, it's it's a lot like bass fishing to me, um, you know, or, or a drum or anything else. You know, I'm still going to be throwing, um, you know, just say I'm using a DOA, extra app, anything like that. Um, you know, I'm going to be focusing on, you know, nervous bait, if that's still the case. Um, you know, any kind of little change in, you know, the, the grass line, I mean, a point, a pocket, um, just a little indention. I mean, anything like that, a little ledge. Uh, I mean, I'm going to focus on those areas much harder than I am going to be just the, the flat grass line. Yeah. I mean, it, even if it's little, man, it's still, you know, it's still an ambush point of some kind. Um, 
you know, so I'm going to be focusing on those things really hard, you know, on my first initial pass through that, um, you know, really targeting stuff like that, um, especially nervous bait. I mean, I've picked a lot of trout off of, you know, they just got done busting finger mullet or something like that. Um, you know, so I'm going to really work through those areas really hard. Um, you know, I, I like to go into the current with my trolling motor. Um, you know, going against it, I think it's just easier to control it. Um, I think you get a more natural presentation by going with the current, you know, just flowing with it. Um, but to me, it's a little bit hard to, you know, control the boat, especially on a charter. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, so I'm, I'm going to go, you know, directly into the current and, you know, work those areas hard. Um, you know, and if, if I work, you know, one stretch and, you know, I'm not getting any bites, you know, I'm, I'm going to change lures. I mean, um, the, the main thing to me is, is really having confidence in what you're throwing. I mean, that's that's the best advice I can give to anybody on any kind of bank or structure like that. You know, you've got to have confidence in what you're throwing. I mean, it's um, it's really easy to, you know, get discouraged, you know, when you don't get a bite in the first three or four places that look awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and a lot of people will change or change their tactic, um, you know, bait, presentation, whatever. Um, so I, I like to, if I can help it, um, I like to work one area solidly, um, you know, with my best game I can possibly do with the same bait, you know, not changing. Um, and then once I work that area, then I may come back by and, you know, and fish it with a different bait. But, um, you know, that, that's, that's my main thing, man, is, is focusing on those ambush points, um, you know, nervous bait and, you know, ha having confidence in what I'm throwing. Um, you know, trying to trying to maintain consistency and everything, not getting complacent and want to change because I'm not getting any bites. Right. Um, that, that's my main thing as far as you know, just just fishing one area. Yeah, that, I, I like that, man. Having something that you're confident in um, and fishing it well, and and, and a bait that you yep. know that at least somebody's gonna gonna tap at it and, and tell you that they're home. Um, and and it sounds like for you, but also for me, it's that DOA shrimp. That bait is really. Mm -hmm. I just feel like if there's a trout that's going to feed in an area, they're going to eat it. Now, it is an intimidating bait to learn how to fish. Yes. Um, it's light. Uh, you can very easily work it too quickly and have it way too high up in the water column. Absolutely. Uh, but it, it, it'll get the bites. It, is there a bait that you feel like for listeners that, that want to go out and trout fish that might not have done much of it is a good bait? that Because the DOA shrimp is a little tough to fish at first. What would you recommend as like a really good bait if you're going to just stick with something and go try to locate trout? And if it's a DOA shrimp, that's fine. But if it's something else, like for a beginner to get out there and uh, find find trout. Sure, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. I was thinking about that earlier. Um, it, it really is. Um, it, it took me a, a long time to, to figure out how to use it. And truthfully, what made me, okay, I need to figure this out was I was tired of seeing people catch fish. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I wasn't, when they would be – and it's not to say the DOA is the end all be all, but those fish can get fired up on that bait very easy. Yeah. And if the people around you ever got those fish fired up, it's hard to get them to bite anything else. Um, as far as really hard to mess up, I mean, uh, something like an X trap or anything is great. You know, it's got the bill on it. Um, you, you're going to be in that water column, you know, if they're in, you know, four foot of water or whatever, you're going to be there. Um, but you can certainly i've had people that don't work hard baits that well mm -hmm. um you know they don't quite jerk it and twitch it or whatever hard enough um probably probably a, a, a voodoo yeah. really i mean you, you've got the weight to to get you down you can certainly fish it where it's going to be hitting the bottom but i mean a, a trout will come pick one of those shrimp off the bottom if you're you know if you're Definitely. twitching it you know, even if you're picking it up eight inches off the bottom, you know, they'll come hit it. Um, that would probably be one of the better baits for me, for somebody new, um, you know, that can't figure it out. At least I know they're not going to be way up too high. Yeah. Um, it's still a great bait. You know, it looks like a shrimp. You know, they've, they've got the options to catch other fish with it. Um, that's That would probably be it, and um, truthfully. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that's what I fished for a long time in, in the mix of some other baits. Um, you know, until I really figured out how to, to fish that DOA. Yeah. Um, but, but that or, or some kind of lip bait where I know you're going to be, you know, in the target zone. Um, you know, it's just, it's a little bit, 
easy for somebody to not have confidence in that, um, you know, because they're not feeling the bottom. That, that's the thing that I think boosts people's confidence when they're not used to fishing, things like that. At least the voodoo, you're going to hit the bottom and you're going to be able to feel it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, and then then you then they can adjust from there. That DOA, you just have to get used to not necessarily feeling it the whole time during your cast. No, you know that if a fish bites it, you're going to feel it, but you can't really right. feel the weight of that that bait. Um, and I think what do, what uh, apart from the shape and the obvious, it's like a shrimp. But what makes that DOA work so well is like you look at a jig head, and it's on the bottom most of the time. You look at a jerk bait or a mirror lure, and and it's up a little bit higher in the water column. Um, mid water column but that that doa travels through all sections of the water column but really slowly so it's like it's yep. spending enough time if they're biting in the mid water column to get eaten there if they're biting low you fish it slower it's down there it's not like it's darting to one section of the water column and yep. spending the whole time yep. there it kind of travels slowly through all of them uh, and i think that's why it does so well any of those baits and that's why i think a mirror lure does so well as well because it, it kind of slowly transit like travels yeah. through that that whole yep. water column and I mean, you, you you can fish that bait truthfully in any column of the water you want to. Yeah, I mean, you can fish it right right at the surface. You know, your middle of the column on on the bottom. I mean, obviously it's a little bit of your current and everything, but I mean that that is one bait you can truthfully fish in any part of the column you want. So I mean, it's a very versatile lure, I think. I mean, given you're not skipping it across the top, you know, right. like a top water bluff, but. You could get it right there in that area. No, um, definitely, definitely. It's it's pre, it's presentation um, is very good. So I'm sure you've seen it before, where you throw that DOA and like before you close the bale, you already see the toilet bowl oh. swirl, and the fish is yeah. on. <laughs> right. It's yeah. fun. It's fun. Well, sweet. Well, we're we're at 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, is there anything else? you know as you kind of pick your brain that that you think would be an important piece to share as far as that i maybe i haven't led the conversation of this area but um you know targeting trout this time of year and maybe building confidence and, and finding fish um and if not no yeah, worries i mean I'm, I'm kind of gonna reiterate i mean for somebody new or just in general the frustration that it can you can have this time of year trolling for trout's great yeah um you know, especially somebody new who's trying to learn and figure it out. I mean, I, I told a guy today about it. Um, I haven't been doing it really. Uh, I've been doing okay enough where I haven't had to. But trolling for trout, man, is, is a great way to locate and just get you started. Um, you know, that's it. And, you know, don't waste too much time, you know, in one area. Come back to it. Yeah. You know, leave, you know, fish it and come back. You know, don't, don't be a don't be afraid to come back to an area that you just fished 20 minutes ago. Um, you know, maybe fish it for a short amount of time. I mean, trout's one of those things. If it's on, it's on. I mean, if you fish it five minutes and you haven't gotten a bite, you know, you, you can go to, go elsewhere. But um, those are two really main things to me for this time of year, man, especially for somebody new. Um, I can't really think of anything else in particular. But that's, that's the best advice I can give right offhand. Yeah, that's good. It's funny, like today I saw my clients as we were not catching them for the first two and a half hours and moving every 10 minutes, I could tell they were like, <laughs> we'd make 10 casts in an area and I'd be like, all right, we're moving. And they're like, really? Already moving? I'm like, we're moving. And just keep yeah. moving. It's, it's a hard thing to do. Like you start to lose faith and, and you start to think like, maybe I should sit here and pick it apart. But but those fish are going to show themselves. with If you feel confident about, about your lure and, and the way you're presenting it, those fish are going to yeah. show themselves pretty quickly. So. No, absolutely absolutely i mean like i said I'll, I'll go and come right back yeah you know that that way i can at least go try to see if some fish are biting in a different area you know i'm not really i'm probably not going all that far um but i mean just just because they're not biting in one creek they they might be firing off in the next right so that, that's my thing i like you know trying to move a lot yeah for sure for sure well man thank you so much for coming on and, and you guys we're gonna have luke on continually he's a great angler a great captain. If people want to book a trip with you and go catch a ton of trout this fall, how can they get up with you? Um, Instagram, Facebook, cool. um, Coastline Charters, uh, LLC, any of that. Um, I got a website. I don't feel like anybody really use what, uses websites anymore. I feel like it's all <laughs> social media based. It but, is. Um, it's the same thing. Um, Instagram or Facebook's the easiest way. Cool. So it's Luke Moser, you guys, L U K E, obviously, and then M O S E R. Um, and then very straightforward on Instagram, it's just at Luke Moser, um, which is yeah. at L-U-K-E-M-O-S-E-R. Um, for those of y'all that are listening and not watching the video here, 
Um, but go check him out. Uh, definitely go hop on the boat with him and go catch some fish. Uh, incredible angler, great dude, and a great captain. So uh, y'all enjoy your time there. But I'm going to close it out here, Luke. I'm going to switch back over to my screen. Guys, thank you all so much for checking this one out. I think this was an important podcast to do um, because, you know, sometimes fishing can kick your butt. And it's good to just hear, all right, I'm doing this right. Uh, this is what I need to change. Um, and just to have that confidence to, to leave an area and go to another area or to stay in an area when you need to. So I hope this podcast kind of opened your eyes up to um, kind of how to scout out an area and, and, and pick an area apart a little bit more for speckled trout. Um, but as always, this is Eastern Current Fishing, and we will see you all in the next podcast episode. Later.